Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck. Happy New Year's Eve to you. I'm filming this and posting this on December uh, 31st, 2023. So weird to be at the end of the year. This is going to be my weekly update. So for the last week of the month and of, of the year. <laughs> so um, it was an interesting reading week overall. Um, I had I did have a couple of days off with the Christmas holiday and then I took an extra day. So I only worked three days last week, which was phenomenal. I didn't read that much over the holiday because I felt actually sick on Christmas a little bit and whatever it was, it only lasted about six hours and it wasn't bad. It was just, I didn't read. So I felt like I lost momentum on uh, reading books. And then the next day I didn't read quite so much, but I did play a lot with my book journal and stuff. So hopefully I'll get to show you guys that. Um, at some point, but it's still in the works. And again, don't get your hopes up. It's not really pretty. It's just me having fun. Yes, Cooper. Cooper's here as well. Um, so, um, so this week was really short, which was nice, but it felt so long for those couple days to be at work because it was so quiet. And, uh, cause a lot of my emails went unanswered because people were off on, you know, took vacation days for the short week. And then, um, as I said, yesterday was a day I just sat and read because I wanted to finish the book I was reading because I was just ready to be done <laughs> and I just need to focus and I want to get done it sounds stupid but I want to be done yesterday so that today I could maybe read some shorter things I guess we'll see let's talk about that here so um I did have a lot of videos um in the last week about my plans for um, 2024. I talked about my goals, um, both for 2023 and then the coming year. And then I had my card of shame video, which is all the books that I've partially read that I would like to make decisions on this year, which I'm hoping to do and, and you know, and incorporate those and then into my TBRs, which I posted that as well for January of how I'm going to try to do that, plus the other stuff I'm reading. So hopefully you guys have seen those. Yes, Cooper. Okay. Fine, leave me. Anyway, so, um, so today, um, as I said, we're going to talk about um, my what I read, what I think. No, <laughs> I've already forgotten my thing. Anyway, let's talk about what I I read, what I'm what I'm in the middle of, and what I think I'm going to read in the next week. So again, with being a mood reader, things change, but there are certain things I I do have to read. Um, as I said, this is the thirty first, so. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and then, you know, we'll see how 2024 goes. Anyway, so um, the first book I finished was on Christmas Eve, um, The Brightest Star in Paris by Diana, Diana Biller. So this is, I am counting this as a series book with um, The Widow of Rose House. It is not listed like that in, in Goodreads, but they're connected, they're companion novels because it follows the two Morris brothers, um, more brothers, sorry, M O O R E. Um, in the first book followed Sam, and then this one follows um, Benedict. And um, this one it takes place in Paris, and it is a second chance romance in 1878. I believe that's <laughs> the year. Um, this one, um, again, this one has the struggle of being a second hand chance, second chance romance. I can't talk today um, for me because that is not a trope I enjoy. I actually really dislike most. Uh, second chance romances. There's only a few that I can name that are um, are ones I liked, and I did like this one because uh, it made more sense why they um, like that why they it, they didn't get together, you know, at the time. And again, we're talking about the 1870s, so uh, he was um, in the Civil War, um, and he was um, trying to. Um, what am I trying to say? He had, you know post-traumatic stress kind of stuff and uh stuff that, and he and his family came to Paris um and then he met um Amelie and uh I don't know how to say her name anyway but um she and she was a ballerina and so she had her own family things of what was going on and they had kind of this summer romance but you know not not too much happened but and then he doesn't see her for 12 years he comes back um and he they they meet up again but things have changed a little bit she is now the the primary ballerina in in the company at the Paris uh, ballet and she so she everybody knows who she is so she has this kind of reputation but suddenly she is seeing ghosts <laughs> so there's again there's a speculative um thing with historical fiction 
kind of romance but it's you know it's a very well put together book the widow of rose house was the same thing it had kind of that historical but a lot of normal historical fiction aspects to it and then it had this this kind of ghostly uh this little extra speculative element which i really enjoyed i like her books for that so i'm considering this book two in this series i called it the 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 more family i'm hoping she'll bring out more that it has to do with a couple of the other people connected to this family um it's not counted as a series but i am because there's this book and again the widow of rose house and then there's a novella that talks about their about the boys uh, their parents again they're not boys they're men in this book they're older anyway point is i really enjoyed this um with the way things went um, I was just, it was just a fun read and, um, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm not like it was spectacular or anything or, and like, I just really liked it. Cause again, I love, uh, Benedict's family. Um, and I liked, even if it, though there was a couple flashbacks, um, which made sense to the story. There wasn't too many. And we got to see what happened in the past. You know, it was, it was just kind of hurt. It hurt kind of some of the things that happened. And, uh, and again, that they didn't get together the first time around kind of thing. And then, of how this goes and how it how their lives have changed and what decisions they make in the future. So um, I did really like this for a historical romance speculative <laughs> kind of book. I, if you like kind of like more of a genre blend, this is it that has historical and romance and some speculative. I think it's really it was really fun. Again, um, I would read The Widow of Rose House first, um, just because to me they're a series. You you don't have to I guess, but you would get more out of it from the. Um, when they talk about his family, I just, this should be, a, this should be listed as a series in Goodreads. I mean, again, it's, I'm just making up a title of the, the Moore brothers, but, or the Moore family. Um, the Moore family is what I put on my <laughs> spreadsheet, so I know what it is, but I really enjoyed that overall. And, uh, it is a book that I bought a couple of years ago that I, I, <laughs> I meant to get to all this year or, you know, last couple of years. And I finally, um, picked it up. Um, I think it was on my... 23 books in 2023. I have to double check again. I thought it was. Now I'm not positive, but anyway, it's done now. I read it. And then the only other book that I finished took me the rest of the week was House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass. I did restart this. So I was 212 pages in, um, in, and I read that in early September after I'd finished my reread of House of Sky, of Earth and Blood. And I just couldn't read them back to back. I was hoping I could because I wanted to get through this. Um, but <laughs> I just, my I, at the time, I just could not face another 800 page book. And so I put it down. And then I have been all the last couple of months trying to get myself to pick this up. And I just kept putting, no, I'm not, I don't feel like it yet. I don't want to do it yet. And then I, again, we got to the, <laughs> to the end of the December and I had three huge books that I had not, um, finished and so I picked this one of the ones to fix since I know that the the next book in the series House of Flame and Shadow is coming out at the end of January so I wanted to be ready for that and again this book is again the second book in the Crescent City series so um this is only my second Sarah J Maas book so um I this is more urban fantasy you know um fantasy takes place on another world but it's urban fantasy because the, the city that they live in is very technology you know they have stuff like you know that you would recognize I mean the little differences you know and stuff but it would it looks like our kind of some like a lot of like our life but a lot of speculative elements because there are shifters and fae and a lot of other uh mirror folk and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff in this so this was an interesting uh continuation of book one again book one ended just explosively and um that was like one of my biggest surprises of the year I don't think there was any surprise that I enjoyed that um but I really I I did this one was a lot harder of a read for me even th this took me all week which is not it's not if you look at page count that is kind of low for me but with the holiday and then I wasn't feeling very good one a day and then you know it's, this one was just harder to get through I did read the last 200 pages yesterday in order to finish this um, because I just wanted to be done. And I think that was the problem with this is I feel it was too long. Um, I mean, a lot of things that people have said uh, before, I didn't... So when this came out a couple years ago, I did not pay attention because I had not read the first book. And I really had no intention of um, trying that book again because I had tried um, 
House of Sky and Breath, no, House of Earth and Blood um, at one point and just only got like 40 pages in and then I, I DNF'd it. And so I didn't expect to go back to it, but I decided to do that this year. And I'm really glad I did because it was a, it was a great ride um, overall. Um, this one didn't have like a whole section that I detested like I did in that book because there's like 120 pages where I really hate that book. Um, this one was more, um, there were little sections where I'm like, why are we, there's, there's too much, there's, this is taking too long. We're, we're spacing it out and we're not getting to the point. And so I felt like this book was just a little too long. Like I would say at least a hundred to 200 pages too long. Um, I think there could have been a lot of little side plots that we really, I don't see that we needed all of them. I, I do like the way she plots and I do like the way, uh, things did come together from stuff that happened earlier. Um, she's really good about that where she slipped something in. A few of her reveals were surprises that were really good. There was a couple that I kind of guessed, but it, you know, it was because she took too long to get to it. So I kind of guessed it by the time we got there. But really overall, um, I still enjoyed my reading of this, even if there were points where I was like, I don't want to pick this book up anymore. And I think it's because I read too much yesterday. I was just getting to the point where I was getting tired of it. And I just wanted to be done. And it just... <laughs> It was a lot of pages to read yesterday and again I didn't have anything else to do it was just it was a lot in one book that I wasn't I wasn't it's not a favorite of mine but I still enjoyed it I still the ending I'm still okay now I'm gonna go so today I'm gonna go and watch some videos from people who read this when it first came out people who loved um house of earth and blood and see what they say because I know that a lot of people were disappointed in this and again my problem was is I think it's too long and it's not as tightly uh, put together as the first book but there still was a lot of good in here I like there's a lot as I said a lot of good things the ending was explosive and I need to find out if there's uh some books I have to read before I pick up book three that comes out in a month and I was really hoping not to read any of the other series by Sarah J Maas because I have tried uh both well Thorn and Gra Glass I just kind of briefly tried it and I was like no you know that's a little too young for me kind of at the beginning so I don't know I mean I didn't really give that one a shot and again everybody always says you have to get a couple of books into that before it gets good <laughs> so I don't know if I can do that one and then um A Court of Thorns and Roses series I have DNF'd <laughs> The first book twice once i did when i first joined uh booktube i did it in uh 2017 i read uh, a little bit of it i bought the book and then i got rid i gave the book to my friend to take to her her classroom because i didn't want it and then um i tried it again on audio this fall um and i, I just didn't have time so that wasn't a really a real dnf it was more I didn't have time to listen to it when I got it from the library and I just had too many things going on that I returned it right away. Sorry. Um, so I didn't really give it a shot. So I don't know if you guys have read the Crescent City series and know how things go and stuff and you think that I need to read um, A Quarter of, um, of Thorns and Roses as well. If I need to read that series, let me know what you think. Um, as I said, I might wait to see what people's reviews are on the third book to see if I have to read those. I, I just, I mean, I could just, I just don't know. I might just buy the set of the, the novels and just give it another shot and just, I don't know. I don't know what to do with because of how this ended and what happened. And, um, I have a lot of questions and I don't know any, I don't know the answers and I don't know if I need to be prepared to go into the third book by reading some of um, Sarah J. Mass's other books because that's about all I know. Like, I that's that's about all I want to say all that because, uh, again, I really... It was a really interesting reading experience and I'm glad I got through it. I'm glad I finished it before <laughs> the end of the year. And I'm glad I finished it before the third book comes out. So I'm up to date on a series. <laughs> and uh, I did finish that um, last night. So <laughs> anyway... I don't know what else to say all that. Just tell me if I need to read, if I need to force myself to get, to really try A Court of Thorns and Roses and that whole series. Or think, or you think I should. Because again, I hear good things about the book, second book for sure. Like everybody talks about um, um, Miss and Fury. And I just like, I kind of want to get there because everybody talks about it. But <laughs> I have to get through the first book. So we'll see. Um, so, um... What I am in the middle of right now, I did start last night, The Sword by Jay Bree. This is the, 
uh, second novella that comes before the, uh, the Crown of Oaths and something. I didn't get the picture, did I? Oh, no. I don't remember what it is. But um, it's another <laughs> fantasy series. Again, I read um, The Scepter last week. Um, of the little novella. They're about 90 pages. So I'm just going to read this one um, and make a decision if I want um, if I want to read the big novel that's like 644 pages. It's definitely an enemies to lovers with Fae and witches. And uh, I like, inter it's interesting so far. I'm kind of curious. If, I probably will try to read these. These are all on Kindle Unlimited. As I said, I have Kindle Unlimited for a couple of months. So I do, even though I'm trying to read what I own on my shelf, I'm trying to take advantage of something I I have for the next couple months and try to get some um, Kindle Unlimited books in my uh, reading. So this is a series I wanted to look at. I think it's the Mortal Fates is the series. Um, something like that. I don't remember. I don't know enough about it. Sorry, guys. But um, this one is following uh, the male perspective that we'll get in the main book and his um, and thing where he's at in when I think right before the book will start. So, cause now it's many years since uh, The Scepter, which was the first book from her point of view and what she learned and stuff at the time. And then, so it's interesting. I'm, it's a good uh, fantasy series as said. There's a war going on between the Fae and witches and they are on opposing sides. And that's about all I want. And they're fated mates. So again, they need to come together, but they hate each other. So right now they're separated. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I do want to, um, read that. I am still in the middle of Wild Scottish Love, which is book two in the Enchanted Highlands series. This one is, is by uh, Trisha O'Malley. So I'm not sure about this one. So I have this also on my my Kindle. I've been reading, you know, as I said, this is another Kindle Unlimited one. I read the first book, um, Wild Scottish Night, I think. Um, uh, last the summer when I had Kindle Love it again for a deal and I had it for a couple months. So I liked it, but I didn't love it. And I wanted to at least try it a little bit more to see if this is a series I wanted to continue. I'm not sure I want to. This is about some people who, um, there mostly is about a couple of Americans who come over in each, what, one in, in, in each book come over to this little, small little, um, Scottish town who have a Kelpie problem. And there's also some kind of history involved that they, their ancestors were somehow connected and they're trying to form some, you know, they're kind of coming together to protect the area. Um, so it's very, it's a modern, but has the uh, fantastical elements of the Kelpie and, um, and then is, and then it's romance and so as well. So there's good elements to this. I just, I don't know if I'm really getting along with the writing and um, the way things are going together. I do want to give it a little bit more today to make a decision. I'm about 70 pages, I think, in, and I think it's like 270. So I'm going to, I think, or 250, something like that. So um, I'm going to give it a little bit more time. I'm, I figure today after I finish the sword, which I have like 60 pages left. So I only read 30% uh, of that last night. Um, and like it's 90 pages. So this one will be a little bit longer. So I might try to uh, finish this or at least l read a little bit more and see if this is a series I want to continue or not. Because I'm not sure. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of iffy on that. Um, I do hope to um, try to pick up Small Miracles um, by Olivia Atwater this week. I did restart it. So I had, again, I got close to 100 pages when I stopped this summer, but I read two pages at work one of the days because um, I didn't feel like picking up House of Sky and Breath. So I was, I had just, a Friday, I was kind of, it was a weird day because it was so quiet and there was nothing to do. And so I was uh, trying to decide, I didn't really feel like that, but I was like, do I want to put that down and try to read some other books? And I was like, well, let's read a chapter of this. So I read a chapter of this and then I read a chapter of that. And then I came back and read the second chapter of this and then I read a chapter of that. And then I continued with that one instead of this. So I did get two more chap get two chapters in and then so I'm going to reread um cuz I read nine chapters before and then uh, continue on. So this is following um Gadriel who is the fallen angel of petty temptations and she is tasked with following this um woman called Holly Harker who is doesn't let any temptations like 
she says no to everything kind of thing. So she has a score uh, that she is, you know, way too good for her own good kind of thing. But we don't know why at the beginning, why her score is like that. And they, and so there's like footnotes in this one. There are little tallies of what her, her points are at or, you know, and it's funny. And other people who are that we do meet will have those as well. So it's funny because we're talking about angels who are trying, she's trying to tempt this woman to do stuff. But I'm not. I remember that there was something going on with the main character, the Holly's sister that I wasn't really jiving with. So I'm going to try it again and see if I can get through this because it was fun, but you know, wasn't, obviously I set it down. So it's one of my Carter Shane books that I wanted to get to. So I'm going to try to get to that this first week of the month. We'll see what happens. Um, Way of Kings, I did read reread by audio uh, another chapter and a half. Um, to get me back to where I was at. I'm just listening to the audiobook until I get to where I had stopped last time um, in order to um, get back into this and then I'll read it physically. So, but I don't think it's going to be this week, but I might try to get that audio. I think I have another hour or two to read. I think I have three, two or three chapters. So um, I want to read those, listen to those, and then um, restart this again. But I don't expect to pick up the book until... I mean, I might listen, but I won't pick up the book beyond that until next week because I have some things I want to read this week. Um, I am, I still have um, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff um, from the library, but it's going to go back in a few days and I have not made any progress on this. This is a book that I picked up on a whim in December from the library and um, I do want to read this and this is a book that I definitely want to get the audiobook again. Um, so I might let it go so other people can listen to it and then um, re put my name back in to have it come again. Um, I just, I don't know. I might even have to use a credit to get the audiobook just to listen to it, but I don't feel like this right now. So again, this is epic. Uh, this is also epic fantasy, uh, but this was our, well, this is with vampires have taken over the world, over, over this world and we're following, um, Gabriel, this is Gadriel, this is Gabriel, <laughs> and we're getting his story of, he was a, um, was it a silver sword? I don't remember how it goes. Anyway, but he, um, again, I'm in the, I'm only about 10% in on this story, um, and it's like 790 or 730 pages long, uh, so he is, we're getting his life story of his fight against the vampires and the vampires have kidnapped him or have uh, captured him and he's going to be executed, but he is telling his story to them. So it's like this history, we're getting his story, but we're also getting kind of questions from the, his interrogator and stuff. It's kind of, it's, I like the format so far. I just haven't been in the mood for the, for an audiobook. I didn't listen to audiobooks except for like a chapter or two in a, the way of kings. I really just didn't feel like it. So this one kind of fell by the wayside. I will get it again. Either I will purchase it or I will get it from the library again. I'll probably try to get it from the library again first because I do want to finish this book. I did. I was enjoying it enough and um, it's definitely a book that now I'm looking at. I want to purchase the physical but I'm gonna wait till I finish the audio. Does that make sense? Anyway we'll see because I'm trying not to buy books but I, I do want to uh, finish that um, book. I know the next book is coming out in another month or so. And, um, I'd like to, I don't know if I'll be ready for it that quickly, but at least I could, you know, be caught up on the series maybe later this year if I can get back to that, that get to that too. We'll see. Okay. So those are all the stuff I'm kind of in the middle right now. So, um, I am starting my buddy read of the Love at Stake series. Um, the book for January, um, I'm doing with Berna at British Bookish Adventures is The Undead Next Door, uh, by Carolyn Sparks. This is book four. I think it's book four. Uh, in the Love at Stake series. So these are vampire novels. Most of them take place in New York City. I think this one must take place there too, but the main character, the main uh, vampire, he is from Paris. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not quite sure where it takes place, but again, <laughs> there's uh, <laughs> uh it's, you know, it has to do with, I, I, there's a love story. There's there's going to be some intrigue. Something's going to happen. I don't know. I just I just like they're, these are just fun uh, paranormal romances. Um, and just they're just enjoyable. So we're doing our buddy read of this first week of the month. We're starting on Tuesday through Saturday. So I should have this done by next week. And um, I have it all marked up ready to go little tabs in there. 
So um, anyway, I'm looking forward to this. Again, it, it's just a fun um, series. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think my first book of 2024 is going to be The Burning Witch by Della Hawk. So this is um, the fifth book in the overall the um, the House Witch series, but it's the first book in the Burning Witch series. So I'm not sure um, how many there are going to be. There's at least a second one coming out at the end of January. So um, I'm really looking forward to this. This is following one of the um, children of the of the main people in um, the House Witch the first book books there was a bridge book the princess of uh, potential which i read a couple months ago which i really enjoyed and now we're getting um the burning witch which again there's at least two books i'm not sure if it's gonna be a duology or a trilogy it doesn't say on there but we'll, we'll see how it goes but i want to get this done before the next book comes out so i'm caught up on the series but i think this is going to be my first book of 2024 but just because i have enjoyed all of these books so much um they're cozy fantasy sorry uh they're cozy fantasy that um they're just funny and um i just i just love the characters in the house which uh trilogy and then um i did really like the the princess of potential and then i'm so i want to see how this character <laughs> what happens with her because she's pretty fiery <laughs> that goes with her hair but she's I just want to see what happens I have no idea where it's going to go and as I said I, the next book's coming out soon so as soon as I'll probably read that fairly soon as well but I'm really excited for this so I think that's going to be uh the book I pick up that'll be my first read of 2024 so I probably won't pick it up until tomorrow but today as I said I want to finish the sword and then I'm going to try wild scottish uh love and if I like it or I don't like it I do have a couple of small books that I could pick up to uh to also read if I don't read the wild Scottish um love I might read the Victorian Chase Lounge by Makat oh how do you say that Marhat Mahogany I don't know how you say that last key I've had this on my shelf for years it's supposed to be like a little um haunted story that's about all i remember and then i have like a translated work um the last children of tokyo by yoko tawada um this one i can't remember this is, has to do with um an elderly man i think telling uh some stories to uh his his grandson or something and i've had this for a couple of years as well this is translated from the japanese by margaret misutani so um this one is an author i f i have a hit or miss with so i want to read this and get this either off my shelf or decide about that so i don't know i might pick up one of these we'll see or, or else i'll just start the burning witch and probably finish it in 2024 but start it today we'll see how i feel i'm not quite sure i am as i said i'm really pleased that i got done with house of sky and breath even though last this morning i'm laying in bed i'm trying to you know, I'm dozing right before I, I get up in the morning because, um, again, it's it's a Sunday, so I didn't have to get up early. Um, I did go for coffee, but I was laying there just thinking and I'm like, oh, am I going to have to buy all the other Sarah J. Bass books? Am I going to have to do that? Someone let me know what I should do. Oh, I'm so tempted just to uh, buy the box sets and just, you know, get to them at some point. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. We'll, we'll see what happens. So, um and definitely tell me if I should read the Akatar series. Like, <laughs> if I should just do it and get it. Just make myself get through that first book. I know it's supposed to get better. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I just need to get more than 40 pages in. And maybe it'll be fine. I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Anyway, so let me know if you have any suggestions on that. And if you've read House of Sky and Breath. And let me know what you thought about that. Or let me know what you are reading. Um, as you cross over into the new year, are you one of those people who are going to try to finish up a lot of things right before the end? Or are you going to just read whatever you're reading over <laughs> and cross over? I'll see what I feel like. It just depends on how my reading goes today, uh, what I do. But for sure, one of the first books I'm going to pick up in the new year will be The Burning Witch. And then again, my buddy read starts on the second. So we'll see how it goes. So anyway, um, that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.